Hey everybody, welcome into the Nesson Bruins podcast. I'm Nesson.com's Mike Cole, joined as always by my good friend Logan Mullen. Logan, how are we? Good, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Uh, that, uh, you know, by the time somebody listens to this, it may be Saturday, Sunday, even Monday. But hey, you if know. they catch it tonight though, you know, that's getting true. ready for a big night on the town. That's, you know, and, and that's what I tell everybody is if you're looking for something to pregame to, uh, you know, a lot of people go I can't with the, think of anything the music. Yeah, I, I'm probably throwing this on. Nothing starts the party like the Nesson Bruins podcast. Uh, and right now, there's there's no shortage of uh, good vibes to spread when it comes to the Bruins. Bruins, I would say, uh, by virtue of their win Thursday night over the Tampa Bay Lightning, are the hottest team in hockey. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there would be anybody who could put up a, uh, a, a counter to that. What is the point streak at now? 15? 15. 15 right? games, 15. yeah. They're 9-0-1 oh, in the last 10. Uh, they've won two straight, including that uh, Tampa Bay win, uh, which was really, in some people's eyes, a statement win. Uh, Bruce Cassidy kind of downplayed the importance of the win, generally speaking, after the game. But I think it's, you know, it was a good measuring stick game. Um, for Tampa, it was their second game in as many nights, so there's something to be said there. Yeah, the game was I, in Boston as well. Yeah, I have a tough time buying that, though. The, no, it's everybody understandable. Has, it's late February. Right. Everybody has a tough schedule. Yeah. Both of them were on a collision course heading to yep. this matchup the entire month of February, especially when neither of them were really losing in regulation. The Lightning right. not, just just not losing at all. Um, so I, I buy the fatigue thing to like a very small degree, but, but as convincing as the Bruins were in the third period. Well, and that's the thing is the, the Bruins really dump truck the Lightning. Like that game, yeah. you know, 4-1 final probably could have been Six seven one. Louis I mean, Domingue was great. Right, yeah. and without you know, without a couple, I mean, the the glove save, the sprawling glove save, really yeah. stands out. Uh, a few more too. You know, there's a save there on. Uh, uh, I think it was on Johansson. That was a big one as oh, well. Oh, it was the Johansson. Uh, right. So he, you know, a, a couple <laughs> saves here and there, and that game could have been a, a real laugher. So, um, I, I guess you know, how much should we read into that? What does that mean right now? What does it mean moving forward? If it means anything, it's still late February right now yeah. now it's March so there's only so much stock I can put into it I mean I guess from a morale boosting standpoint uh-huh. it's good and you can show like okay at least we can compete with these right. guys and there are certain things to take away like how they neutralize some guys but um, you know it's you never want to get too high and you never want to get too low right so wow. they could you know blow the doors off of them the way that they did last night yeah. and then get, you know, to use the term, you just use dump trucked in four games yep. come April or May. Yep. Um, so I think there's some lessons to take from it, and there's a little bit of, okay, we can at least compete with these guys, but I don't think there's any sense in getting too high on it. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think Tampa Bay played particularly well either, whether you want to blame the fatigue or something else. Uh, this was not the sort of suffocating effort that we saw all series last year. Uh, I think that's something where when the playoffs roll around, you're going to, you know, you obviously should expect a a much tighter checking team, uh, a much stronger defensive team. Like I said, the Bruins, you know, like I said, they could have scored, you know, two or three more goals. They had chances all night. The the shot differential, especially through two periods, was uh, incredible. It was just, it was all Bruins. So I think there's, like you said, kind of some things to build off and, and certainly has to feel good in terms of the confidence. Uh, to continue to succeed the way that they have without David Pasternak is another sign for right. uh, for optimism. But yeah, I'm not. I mean, like you said, it's now we're into March, mm-hmm. early March. You know, so we have like 20 games left. Right. 18 yeah. 18 games left. A handful of games left, or I mean, a quarter of the season, really. <laughs> right. You know. Uh, so there's a, a a long way to go. But again, I think it's just a nice. It came at a good time in terms right. of like trying to figure out how good they've been lately you know um but you know i think the the most impressive thing maybe about this win is just the totality of what it's been recently for the bruins Mm -hmm. where if you step back and look at it this week they've beaten handily the sharks and lightning well and they beat the sharks last week and coming off of a very impressive road trip yeah uh out west you know a bit of a letdown sun uh, saturday in st louis but i mean that happens uh, so if you just, like I said, if you look at the last, or really, I mean, if you want to take the entire point streak, they've played extremely well. And, and they've, they've played some good teams. Yeah, so. So, and they've stepped up when they've needed to. Uh, there haven't been any, uh, there haven't been any real letdowns. I think that's right. been one of the most impressive things about the Cassidy era is just, yeah. uh, you know, built-in losses don't necessarily turn out that way. I mean, even, 
you know, the, the San Jose game in Boston, that's the first game back after a long road trip. You get down one nothing early and you come back and really route them. So, you know, there's not a whole lot to complain about right now. And honestly, the, the way that I look at it, too, is if you want to take anything, there's two things I can take from the Lightning game. One, how it relates to the point streak as a right. whole, that it was at least they were well into it. They weren't just rolling over a bunch of crappy teams. But to go in and have a convincing yeah. win over the Lightning was impressive. But also, I think I was more impressed with the defense than the offense. Mm-hmm. The way that they checked and the physical brand that they brought um, – was pretty refreshing to see and I mean Nikita Kucherov is one of the probably the most prolific scorer in the NHL right now that's hardly a debate and he was a ghost last night yeah um, and so things like that the way they neutralized certain guys um, was probably what was more impressive to me than the minute and a half stretch where you know the, the right, brush yeah. goal, goal was great and everything like that but you could tell once it was two nothing that the lightning had kind of packed it in a little bit those um, those late goals that that floor was almost like a, a way of everything just evening it out where like right. the score finally caught up to the play of the game right um so yeah impressive they've been real good lately uh, one area in which we, we really focused a lot of our efforts on last week was the trade deadline. Uh, you were, if, if we were good, this is where we would rewind to you dismissing uh, the idea of the yeah. Bruins. A little flashback to you saying Charlie Coyle is not an option. Uh, literally like an hour or two after we got done talking about that, uh, the, the Bruins went out, and trade <laughs> up, went out and traded for Charlie Coyle, uh, trading Ryan Donato to get the Coyle from uh, Minnesota. Uh, they also went out and acquired Marcus Johansson for a pair of draft picks from the Devils. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the conversation heading into last week, heading into the trade deadline, centered around will they kind of swing for the fences? Sounds like they tried, uh, and I don't think, you know, Don Sweeney wasn't willing to kind of, you know, talk about specifics when it comes to a guy like Mark Stone. But I thought it was telling where he was. He said. Uh, you know, Mark Stone did well for himself. I think that's kind of Sweeney's way of saying they weren't going to be able to finesse what the Golden Knights right. did too in signing. Him. Yeah, and that's what I'm, that's what I mean. Is like he said, you know. So I don't think that they were in the position or willing to be in the position where they would have had to pay him the kind of money that uh, Vegas did. So uh, you know, I I think the the natural inclination might have been a little bit of a letdown, but you know, we can kind of assess where they've been through two or three games with these guys. And I guess we could start with Coyle. Uh, really, what has been your uh, impression of him so far? Well, I like the Coil deal a lot more because they got Johansson. Um, if it was just Coil, that yeah, would right. have been a pretty yeah, yeah. underwhelming deadline. Um, but the big reason that I like him is because he's going to be an above-average third-line center if they keep him in that role, yeah. and he has term on his contract. Yep. I mean, uh, going down the middle of Bergeron, Krejci, and Charlie Coyle really is not that bad. Uh, probably I mean, one of the better ones. Yeah, yeah, if you go to the fourth Ch- Atari, line, too, exactly, right? right. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing is that you don't really have to worry about that anymore. Um, I think that... It's good that they have a guy that both can move the puck well but also create some chances for himself. I think he created one right along the net last yeah, night. He, yeah. um, and so and and he can at least be a decent defender too, you know. Yeah. You're not going to have to worry about and, and the, the problem with I guess he's a nice mesh of what you were getting from Jacob Forsback or Carlson, where it's like, okay, he could create a few chances offensively, but his def- defense wasn't great. And then, you know, same thing with Trent Frederick and all these, mm-hmm. and where it was, you know, he was a ghost offensively, but at least he played heavy defensively. Um, so I think he's a nice balance and of what you were getting, but also not getting from the different guys you were trying out in that third line role. Um, so for the position that he's going to serve, I, I think it was a prudent uh, pickup. Yeah, I, I think it's been, you know, I'm with you. And I, I think definitely the totality, again, of, of the, the deadline and getting both of those guys is the important thing here. Uh, and I kind of look at it, and this is my opinion on both uh, Coyle and Johansson, is uh, you've got upgrades. You, you've got better, right. you know, without mortgaging your future. Um, you know, who knows what Ryan Donato becomes, but, you know... He had his chance, and I mean, they gave up on him early, like they did. Right. I don't know if they gave up on him too early, but he's he's going to get better, I think. Yeah. But, you know, you kind of look at what they've got slotted in right now on that roster, and there wasn't necessarily a spot for him unless he was going to make it so they didn't have a choice. The Bruins' window's narrowed. Too. Right, like, that's I don't the other think thing. people yeah. realize that. Like, at, at some point, Char will retire. You know, at, at some point, Bergeron and Crazy's right. games most likely will start taking a dip. Who knows when that'll be, but... 
you don't really, especially seeing what we've seen now that like, you know, crap, they could actually contend. You don't want to start being like, well, let's wait out Ryan Donato. Right. You don't really have the time to the, wait those guys in out. In the spring of 2019, you know, Marcus Johansson and Charlie Coyle, Char Charlie Coyle are far more important to this team than Ryan Donato would be. So, right. uh, you know, I think that that's, you kind of deal with that. Uh, in terms of Coyle, yeah, I think he's been, uh, he's been fine. You know, and like I said, it's a, he represents an upgrade kind of the way you touched on. Uh, got good size. I think he he's and the the other thing too I like about both of these pickups a lot of versatility. Right. Uh, you know they can kind of slot in different spots. Looking into that with Johansson as well. Um, I was just going through looking at the numbers. Like he's been again. It's a very small sample size, but uh, uh, Coyle's possession numbers since getting to the Bruins have been really good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know he's be, being used more so you know defensive zone starts, which makes sense as a as a third line center. But again, filled a hole that they needed. It was an upgrade. Uh, he's looked good. I think you know, he's been pretty comfortable so far. Obviously, coming home, there's a bit of a whirlwind with that, but I think he's kind of adjusted to that very well so far. So it's a good spot for him, I think. And it's, it's kind of, I think uh, his versatility is going to, you know, benefit them down the line when they have to start kind of shuffling things up a little bit as well. Right, yeah, and it, it does benefit that he can play from the wing. But, uh, you know, when we first kicked off the podcast this year, one of the things we were talking about, well, how are they going to replace Riley Nash? Right. And Riley Nash had had a career year, but that's sort of the going rate for what Coyle's been able to produce. Yep. So, you know, Donato seems, and what was it, conditional fifth, seems like a small price to pay um, for, for a guy that you at least have through next year, too, and it buys you time yep. to where if you want to keep somebody in Providence and see how it plays out, you have the option to do that. The ceiling's higher than Nash, too. I mean, way higher. You know, Nash so, has been bad yeah. with the Blue Jays. And I mean, it's yeah. one of those things where, you know, maybe Nash was, a, you know, benefited from playing in the system. So maybe, you know, you can get more out of Coil and he kind of actualizes that, uh, that potential and reaches that ceiling here. So uh, it's interesting. It's, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, let's move on to Marcus Johansson. Uh, picked up for, if I believe it was a second and a conditional fourth. or is Yeah, it I think it was a second. Conditional fourth. second and a... Yeah. It's the conditions really throw me off. It's it's you know it's hard to keep track of, um, but you know they got him at the deadline, pretty much at the buzzer by the sounds of it. Yeah, I think uh, it was shortly past. It was you know whenever the beat writers send out the condescending, well, trade calls know, can still yeah. come in afterwards. I think that was exactly that, what that happened one came out Johansson. after. Uh, yeah, that was announced <laughs> after everybody's pencils were put down. So uh, I think he's been really good through what is it two games yeah it's very small sample size <laughs> right two games against very good teams i will say that uh again love the versatility uh a guy who's played a lot of left wing this year he's played center now they got him on the right wing uh for the bruins um or did I reverse that well he's a he's a left shot yeah but he's been i mean yes yeah because they've been playing to brusque on the left right so right. yeah exactly all right um you got it right yeah i thought so it was, it, as i was it was coming out i was like uh, um, so I like that uh, again. Like I said, the versatility. Uh, he's looked awesome with Krejci. Like they yeah. have instant chemistry. Uh, and I think you really saw it uh, Thursday night against Tampa. Again, like I said, he almost scored a goal. He was in a perfect spot there. Uh, I thought it was interesting. Marshand, who's had a lot of uh, run-ins or had the notable run-in with Johansson in the past. Right. Uh, they've seemed to bury the hatchet. Uh, and I thought it was interesting after the the San Jose game. Marshand kind of said. Uh, he's got a lot of Krejci in his game. Mm -hmm. You know, they're both really good, uh, good he's vision. Great on the pot. Right, yeah. yeah. They are they play stronger than maybe they look. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's something that's stood out at least so far. So, again, it's it's an upgrade. It's, it's represented right. an upgrade over what you had. Uh, he's a guy who can play different roles. So there's a lot to like about that deal, especially giving up a couple of draft picks. Uh, you know, and you're, I think you're a little bit easier to – part with draft picks when you have as much prospect capital as the the Bruins have right now too so uh so far so good with this one right and they made made it through the trade deadline without getting rid of their first round right. pick uh which is big I'd say my biggest concern about Johansson is the injury history yeah um which you know some of it guys just can't a lot of it guys just can't prevent um, but conversely, I think another thing that really appeals to me about the pickup is all the postseason experience yeah. he has, especially with Some the Capitals. Some big goals, I mean, too. He's, yeah, yeah. And I think uh, at 72 
two postseason games between wow. the Capitals and the Devils. Um, and so that's, you know, that was something fair or unfair I was harping on a lot last week when we were talking about the trade deadline. And it's, you know, it's great to get a guy that is young and has, you know, good numbers and whatnot, but somebody who's actually done it in the postseason uh, is at least somewhat encouraging. He's got nine goals and 21 assists yep. in the postseason. So, um, playing 18 minutes a night, too. Right. The... So, to me, that's at least worth something. And some of those capital teams were good teams. Yep. I mean, he was on the one that came in and rolled over the Bruins in, what was it, 2012? Right. <laughs> right. In right. the first round. Um, but anywho, I thought that it was a good it was a good pickup without having to mortgage your future yeah. too much. And it was, it, you know, last year the first move they made was uh, getting Nick Holden right, yeah. and they they sent was a Rob O'Gara over. Yeah. But when you make deals like that, like that's that's what you're gonna get. Like if you're unwilling to part with a I want to say NHL ready player because Donato is technically NHL ready. But if you want to part with a high draft pick or a top end prospect, then that a guy like Marcus Johansson is what you're going to get. And to me, I have no issues with that because they at least uh, had a little bit of an eye of the future. Because you can tell just from last year that Sweeney was not happy that he mm -hmm. gave up the first. And maybe if Rick Nash worked out a little better, yeah. to no fault of his own, he'd feel a little bit differently about it. But. De Sweeney was definitely snake bitten by that. And he made that a, a point of emphasis before and after the, the deadline that he that was something he didn't want to do. So yeah. I don't think a fully healthy Rick Nash would have helped that. No, but, probably not. Yeah. No. But I, I give him credit for trying yeah. it's i like when teams go for it so but yeah it's it's a delicate balance uh, i have seen people and you know we'll see how this kind of shakes out kind of point that you know similar to 2011 where they wanted to make a splash and ended up getting kelly and peverly yeah. this turns into kelly and peverly part two then god bless them. a lot worse yeah so <laughs> um i can see the similarities but uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna hold hold back uh, judgment on that one for a little bit uh we'll see let's get through a week before we start really uh, getting crazy. All right. Um, so, David Pasternak back to skating. Uh, not does he have a stick yet? <laughs> Last I checked, stick? he ha didn't have a stick. I saw he was even wearing Zdeno Chara's gloves for a little extra p uh, padding on that uh, that dinged up hand. Uh, so he's on the comeback trail, which is a good thing. Uh, the problem, I guess, if you want to call it that, is it's going to present some uh, difficult decisions for Bruce Cassidy. Uh, we're going to get in the lines here a little bit, but if I'm the Bruins, I'm waiting as long as humanly possible to bring back David Pasternak because that's something that, you know, I mean, I guess he can fully heal. You know, he had surgery. Right. It's He should be fine. should be no uh, chance of re-injuring it. You know, Give him the rest. <laughs> but, yeah, you might as well. Like, get it, you know, don't rush him back. You don't need him right now. Right. Uh, the way that the, the playoffs kind of set up right now, the Bruins are 17 points behind Tampa still despite right. – uh, winning last night, so it's Basically not like they you're can, playing for home ice right. against the Leeds. Yeah, and you know, not the end of the world if you don't get. It. I think it's more important to to keep uh, Pasternak healthy. So I'm not taking or I'm not rushing him back. I'm taking my time with him. That being said, what are we doing with the Lions when he gets back? Well, this I I feel like I'm gonna probably be on an island here a little bit. Yep. I think that they should keep the first line as it is. Uh, this is the best we've seen Danton Hyman play. I don't disagree with that. That's, at least I would yeah. try that to yeah. start. I think that you should. I mean, and we've said it before. I mean, you and I could play well on that top line, but still, this is the best we've seen Danton Hyman in his NHL career, never mind just this year. Um, and, and he had a pretty good year offensively last year. Yeah. Um, but I think you have to continue rolling with that. And I think that they should go with DeBrusque, David Krejci, and uh, Pasternak on the second yep. line. Yep. And then you put Johansson on the left wing, um, have Coyle centering, and Backus on the right. And then this is where I'm really going to be on an island, but I'm defending Joakim Nordstrom's honor. The best the fourth line has been all year, even better that, than it is now, was when it was Wagner, Corrali, and Nordstrom. And the only reason it got broken up is because Nordstrom hurt his leg during the Winter Classic. Yeah. And played through it, mind you, but uh, regardless, Joakim Nordstrom's defense is far more valuable than the numbers he's putting it up he's putting up offensively and I get real hot about this because the people who are saying that Achari should be in the lineup um, but Nordstrom shouldn't this are conveniently neglecting the fact that Achari has eight points and Nordstrom has seven and five of them are goals this is a it's a tough take to have 
a night after Achari played maybe his best game of the season. I know. <laughs> Nordstrom gets robbed. He was the domain yeah. love save where he I, yeah, put yeah. it right in his No, club. I mean, they both played well, but I like I do think, legitimately think, that was one of the best games Achari's played all season. Yeah. Maybe even as a right. pro. I was about to say, probably his whole career. Right. Um, yeah, I, I had that too. I had that in my notes as well. Pretty much the same thing other than I think Nordstrom is probably the, the odd man out. If that's the decision you're trying to make, that's a good decision. Right, to, if, you, if you're gonna talking about the fourth, fourth line, line. <laughs> left wing or whatever, center. Um, I think maybe I'd be a little concerned if I'm David Backus. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe you kind of finagle things to, to get him out of the lineup. But at least I would try it to see what it looks like. I think that's the thing, too, is there's going to be a lot of experimenting going on once Pasternak returns. Uh, but, yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I'm trying because I think I like – you know, Heinen's looked really good since he's went up there. And I mean, who wouldn't, uh, you know, playing with those guys? Uh, but I, I'm the idea of seeing uh, DeBrusque, what is it, DeBrusque, Krejci, and Pasternak kind of getting a run together. That's good. Uh, it, but at the same time, though, Johansson's looks so, so like that's my thing too. Is right, especially maybe because if it, of Johansson, Krejci. Right, and so right. maybe if it work, it doesn't work out. Uh, you could do worse too than you know Marsha and Bergeron, Pasternak on the top line, and sticking with DeBrus, Krejci, and Johansson on the second line, and then Heinen maybe goes to, you know, maybe Heinen goes down to the third line carrying the momentum that he has. Yeah. I don't think that's it's necessarily... a scary proposition right. for me to do. Coil Heinen, and then I guess Backus. Or well, something that's the like thing. That. Yeah, because my thing with putting Johansson on the third line would be you give David Backus a much more clear role like mm-hmm. he, he just stands in front of the net and then you have a guy who's willing to shoot in Johansson you have a guy that's willing to handle the puck and coil um, and so that uh, yeah. way it allows him to be his best don't get me wrong I am the flag waver at the front of the Joakim Nordstrom parade but <laughs> that third line with coil and Bacchus is just that's not a great combination no. there's too many guys who are far too defensive minded and you know, who's intended to just wreak havoc in front of the net. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Back is an uh, enforcer now, too. But, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> just going to start punching been, people. Uh, uh, incredible. Nice two-game fight streak going for him. So, yeah, I think I think we're in agreement here, uh, sadly, uh, in terms of, like I said, I, I'm not worrying too much about the details of the fourth line. Whatever right. you want to do, that's do it on your time. Ca- <laughs> Cassidy scratched Achari a few times yeah. last year in the postseason, too. That was when Tommy Wingles right. got Right, and so, time. like, well, it's hard to say because the fourth line's been so good. Right. But, I mean, the Bruins it certainly wouldn't be the first time the Bruins or any team has shuffled their fourth line or even their bottom six from game to game in a playoff series. Like, yeah. it's, you kind of just roll the dice until you find something that works. And if it doesn't work, you play them six minutes a night. And it's like, well. Wasn't the fourth line on the cup winning team Marshawn, Gregory Campbell, and um, Sean Thornton at one point? Yeah. 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 And then, yeah, there's the, the Bergeron Obviously, and Drummond. And, was yeah, and Sagan <laughs> comes back in and things were all uh, jumbled up. But, yeah, that was – so things change in a heartbeat, right. especially from game to game, series to series. But it's going to be – like I said, uh, hopefully for the Bruins' sake, this isn't a conversation they have for another couple of weeks and really take it easy with Pasternak. But obviously you want to get them back at a certain point and kind of figure out what you have. So yeah. it's going to be interesting. So um, – all right, let's, uh, before we get out of here, uh, this is sent from you uh, on our rundown. Can the Bruins contend, uh, can this roster, with the new additions, I guess we're assuming here, uh, we're assuming full health for Brandon Carlo. I don't know what his deal uh, is after taking a puck off the either. hand uh, Thursday night. Who's, Brandon Carlo has been very good lately. Yeah, that very kills good. me to admit Yeah, it, exactly. But he's he's I been just, slightly above average. He can be I didn't like even want to bring that up. Second pairing AHL defense. No now. reason to bring that up. I just want to needle you. Uh, so that's good uh, for the Bruins. So uh, the question is, can this roster contend for a cup? If the Tampa Bay Lightning did not exist, so, I would say so like yes, if, probably. If the Bruins were in any other division, they would be the second can favorite imagine, to win the Stanley Cup. Can you imagine if they were in the Metro? Right. and then Because they'd be the top seed and they'd get whoever, and they'd get like the Hurricanes. Or whoever, so the they're Wild also Cup. getting completely parked by the new alignment. Where it's, yeah. I, I looked it up the other day. I don't know if it's changed. I mean, obviously the one and the two hasn't changed, but the matchup might have. Uh, actually, let me look it up right here. I got the standings open. They would have played, when I looked at it, if the under the old one through eight conference alignment, they would have played Carolina. Uh, and so that's been changed now. They'd play Montreal, which isn't as good. I mean, getting Carolina would be something that you, you definitely 
uh, can get on board with. That's a whole lot different than playing Toronto, sure, potentially is. playing at Toronto. Uh, if they don't, if you beat, it's the same thing as last year, right? If you beat Toronto, then you have to go and play the Lightning yep. unless so, they like, that's lose the thing. to the wild card they, team. They might not even get out of the first round. It, it wouldn't be the most disappointing thing in the world. If no. like John Tavares and Austin Matthews just go nuts on you in the first round, like yeah. you kind of tip your cap. Uh, it's going to be hard to get to the conference yeah, final. Yeah, it is. That's, I, I mean, if they end up, if, if the standings hold the way they are and they get the Lightning in the second round, I think the winner of that will probably win the Cup. Uh, yeah. I think Assuming if the they Bruins, don't just beat the hell out of each other. Right. If the Bruins find a way to beat the Lightning, if they end up matched up, that's when I'd be able to say with conviction, like, all right, this team's probably going to win. Right. Um, but... Otherwise, I mean, because you're just going to get to the conference finals and you'll get the Islanders, right. like, you know, or be, before. Take your pick. I mean, Washington can it, always right. get Washington could be a problem just right. from recent history, but. Um, so. I, you know, I, I still think even without last night, they'd have a chance uh, mm -hmm. just because, you know, Rask has played that well. This team is, they seem a little bit deeper, especially now than they were last year. Um, it wouldn't be easy. I wouldn't pick them, but I wouldn't be shocked if they did. So there's, it's still open. I think so to answer the question, yes. It's just going to be much more difficult than it probably should be. Right. It's a skeptical yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a yes if the lightning don't exist. It's an optimistic maybe. Yeah. If you really want to put it. <laughs> Ask me answer. another day. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's basically a magic eight ball. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Ask I wonder again. what the answer would have been if they just got massacred by the lightning. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly a lot of confidence around this team, but they're playing well. And like I said, they're playing better than anybody else in the NHL. So uh, we've got, like you said, we got to wait it's in March. So we've got a month like and a half before the playoffs. So 18. Yeah, games 18 left. games left. All right. So about a fifth of the season. Yeah. No more. 18. Oh no. We're 18 times that. 5 is 90, <laughs> so it's not, it's not that, but close <laughs> enough. Anyway, let's go home. Uh, <laughs> it's been fun, Logan. This is delightful. Yeah. Well, yeah if only well, there was a really good hockey team and a trade deadline to talk about every week, our job would be much easier. I know. Yeah, now we'll just have to, you know, I don't know, talk about random well, games that happen in early we'll, March. We'll recap <laughs> Bruins Devils next week. <laughs> yeah. It'll be delightful. All right. Uh, that's it for the Nesson Bruins podcast. I'm Mike Holt. That's Logan Mullen, and we will catch you sometime next week, hopefully, perhaps. Adios.